Now it's around 6 in the morning and the reason I'm out of bed on a Saturday morning uh, this early is because it is a sunny day and this means that the lettuce flowers are going to open um, much sooner than they would if the, the day was overcast and become sunny later. I'll explain that now in a while, uh, why that's important. But it means that I have to be here today to catch the flowers because they open very quickly um, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to have a look at how to do actually crosses with lettuces. And lettuces are, they are difficult to do, but that's only because of timing and because they're so small. The, the stigmas, um, there are several stigmas that come up, which you'll see in a minute. Um, it's very difficult to actually see, so you're going to have to have a, a lens or something like that and a steady hand as well. So let's take a look and see how it's done. Now, as I said already, to getting the timing right is quite difficult, and you can see here, this is the flower that we want to select for doing uh, our crosses. Just slightly come out of the, the green casing, still closed. Um, as this flower, this flower is going to open today, all these flowers are going to open today, and what is going to happen is, as the flowers open, the stigma start growing out of the green casing under here, and as the flowers already open, all the pollination has already been done. But there's more than one stigma in each of this uh, floret or flower. So what we want to do is, what we need to do, is we're going to have to cut off the petals at the top and you have to do it just above this green line here. And the reason we're here so early is of course because of the weather. It's nice and sunny. So they're going to open much sooner, but we also want to do it soon enough that we don't cut off any of the stigmas that are starting to grow out. So that's one. It's very important to do more than just one flower as well, because not all of them are going to take uh, properly. As lettuce is one of those difficult plants. Let's just do this one. Now it's important to mark them, and the way I do it, I just get a bit of straw and I just stick it around the flowers, otherwise you're never going to find them again. Now since I'm kind of waiting anyway, we might as well talk about the different flowering stages because that's also important to know. What first happens is we have the stage that we know already, which is just the flower starting to open, which you can see just roughly here by a, a flower that I didn't cut. Uh, then it goes to the next stage, which is opening of the flower and that's all done in one day that's no problem there then we have the next stage which is the next day you can just see them here uh, the flower is closed then it goes to the stage of actually it falls off and makes this kind of shape and this can take a few days and eventually it will go into this uh, kind of dandelion flower stage which is actually related to dandelion and then eventually the wind will just kind of blow it away and repopulate itself that way. And just to show you the seeds as well, those then are the seeds. Now since I'm waiting anyway, I thought might as well talk a little bit about the lettuce plant and how it actually works in regards to breeding. And the thing with lettuce is it's another one of those uh, plants that has a perfect flower and that means again that just the male part and the female part are within the same flower so it pollinates itself before the flower um, even opens or well in this case actually just as it opens and that means that when you're doing breeding work with this plant um, or with any of those that have perfect flowers they are inbreeders that means that um, they don't need many many plants to um, keep that genetic uh, diversity going because you have let's say you have this plant going to flower it hasn't crossed with this plant it's not relying on uh, cross-pollination with bees or wind and it can carry on the genetics quite adequately uh, on its own so I ran into a bit of a snag um, it's overcast at the moment they're going to blow over so that's no big deal but that means that the flowers aren't going to open up until roughly around 10 o'clock and I got out of bed a bit early but you never know with the weather it can 
they always change all of a sudden and that's why you have to watch the flowers as well now there's a bit of a thing that um, I'm going to show you later how to actually wash off the pollen off the female receptive part, the, the stigmas or the pistil and um, it's very important that that's done on a sunny day because the pollen will wash off the uh, the female part much more readily if you we're going to spray it I'll show you that now in a while and if it doesn't all wash off it's going to cross with itself so that's the tricky bit and I'll show you in a minute uh, what that looks like but for now I'm gonna have to wait and see how it goes now I thought I mentioned as well uh, the difference between inbreeders and outbreeders um, in this series as well and the difference as in regards to crossing the difference is that the inbreeders especially with peas for instance uh, you have the Mendel experiment where if you cross two different varieties of peas and um, the next year's plant when you plant them out they don't necessarily look any different you might have like in Mendel's experiment you had all tall or um, all small and that's because the um, the tall gene as so to speak is actually more um, dominant than the the small one so you might not actually if you cross a small and a tall one you might not see the difference next year but the year after you're going to see the the segregation so you're gonna have to be a little bit patient with the breeding and that's why it takes much longer than uh, you would think now with outbreeders it's a bit different because outbreeders um, they rely on wind to pollinate or bees and let's say we take a brassica for instance we take a um, of the same species we take a kale and a cauliflower now when you have the cauliflower and the kale you have a block planted of 20 kale and 20 uh, uh, cauliflower and you let them pollinate freely what's going to happen is you're going to have let's say um, a certain amount of kale will have crossed with itself a certain amount of um, cauliflower will have crossed with itself as well and then there will be a certain percentage of crosses so you will see uh, segre segregation within the next year as well now it helps if you plant them really mixed up together and don't just go you know two blocks like that next to each other um, so that's that let's get back to the lettuce now it's about half past nine and we just about have this very very start of the actual stigmas there's about eight or nine of them starting to grow out and um, this one actually I cut a little bit lower and there's a risk you take when you cut it a bit lower that you do cut off the stigmas but in this case it actually was more of an advantage uh, to go lower so just bear that in mind as well and um, you can actually see them much better the lower you go but you have to be careful now the main point here is going to be I'm gonna have to wait now a good while until these stigmas have grown to their full size and started making a V shape and when it's at the V I'll actually explain that now with the drawing that might be better because even though I'm using a micro zoom lens it's not really actually showing up uh, just that well now you can see here this is going to be the lettuce flower that I just showed you um, up here we have then the stigmas all growing up at the moment they're at the stage one they haven't actually made the little v-shapes yet which you will see here at stage two and at stage two you actually have pollen that is ready to be washed off it's actually a fertile pollen but it needs to be at the stage of the v-shape uh, for the pollen to be able to wa be washed off with just water um, to be able to get it off and again remember that it really has to be a fine spray now the actual stigma is not receptive at the at this little tiny v-shape uh, timing but it will be receptive when it kind of turns around like that so it has to be washed off before it goes to that stage otherwise it's going to self fertilize and it's going to be um, the offspring of the same plant and you won't have been able to make a cross so that's pretty much um, all there is really to it the timing has to be exactly exact now this is going to be my pollen sauce it's actually a red lettuce and you can cross red and green no problem providing it's of the same species of lettuce so no chicories or things like that 
Um, and it's very simple. I'm just going to pick a flower. It's now uh, at the right stage, which is corresponds to the the stage of uh, fertilization. And I'll just show you quickly how it's done. You can see in the center there, there are the stigmas and the pollen. And all you have to do is cut into the petals surrounding the stigmas and just take them away and exposing the, the stigmas and there's the pollen as well. Yeah. Now it's 20 past 11 and you won't be able to see this with the camera actually but just the tiniest of uh, V is starting to form and they will develop more but I'm going to start spraying them because I want to get the pollen off already and I have to go nice and close good spray blow off the water and that's it now most of them have made the V shapes and um, there was two or three that didn't but I'm happy with that now I've waited long enough and I'm just gonna spray off the last of the pollen Just check with the magnifying glass. Yeah. Okay, so it's now time to wait another little while until they've become receptive. Well, I probably could already put the pollen onto uh, the stigma. Will I do that? Yeah, I'm sick of waiting. Sorry, but I've been here for a bit of a time and I'm happy now to get on with things. So I'm going to stick the pollen on there now and it should self pollinate most of the pollen is gone as well so I'm happy with that now I have my flower and it's uh, full of pollen I'm just going to very gently uh, stick it on there about 20 times very very gently I'm not really damaging it with the stigmas now you could actually just use a brush as well but I find this way easier just transfer the pollen that way Now each stigma will correspond to one or more seeds, I'm not too sure how many, uh, probably just one seed. So if there's still some pollen left on there, the chances are that this plant will self itself. Um, so you might get one or two seeds that are actually from just the mother and father is from this plant and then some seeds will be mother and father. So you might have segregation next year. So just to watch out as well for that and then just choose the ones that don't look like the parent plant. That's it, and we're done. Now all we have to do, stick a label on there, and that might correspond to a note somewhere that you have, and then you just tie it on onto the stalk where the flower is. Now one last thing I forgot to mention, always check again with the magnifying glass. Let's just have a quick look. Oh wow, yeah, lots of, actually a lot of pollen grains. I wish you could actually see them here now. There must be about 20 pollen grains per stigma, so I'm pretty happy with that now. That cross is going to make it. Now that's uh, on the lettuce, how to actually do a cross. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, it's been a quite a long morning for me, but I really enjoyed it. And I got my cross done as well, so I'm happy enough. Um, so I see you soon, and thanks for watching.